Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about bioidentical hormones. They're extraordinarily popular these days. If you're a postmenopausal woman or perimenopausal woman and you go see the gynecologist, you have a good chance of getting a prescription for a bioidentical hormone. Question is, are they as safe and effective as the standard therapies? And the answer is no, they are not. There's a question about their potency, the question about their purity, a question about their safety and effectiveness, a question about their bioavailability or bioactivity. Now the concept seems to make sense. We should individualize our treatment on the basis of an individual's needs. Well, that seems like it ought to, to really make sense, but that isn't the way things work that has no rationale in science, at least as far as what we're talking about. Now, it's important because women are spending about a third of their lives during the postmenopause. So what do some of the expert organizations think about the bioidentical hormones? American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology says, no, don't use them, haven't been proven safe and effective. The American Society of Reproductive Medicine, don't use them, haven't been proven effective. Endocrine Society, nope, don't use them, haven't been proven effective. Food and Drug Administration, nope, don't use them. Yet there are people who go and have their hormones tested. They got these salivary hormone levels, or maybe a urine, or maybe a serum level. And then on the basis of that, the doctor tells them, what they need and has a specialty laboratory compound the product for them. But at least as far as the salivary tests are concerned, not FDA approved, not approved by the Health and Human Services. The hormone levels obviously are very low because you're postmenopausal. That's when they're supposed to be low. And is there anything wrong with having low hormone levels? Not as far as we know. But if you're going to replete them, if you're going to take some, you want to take something that really has been proven to be safe and effective, not on the basis of a salivary test, certainly. Salivary tests where an individual has different levels at different times of the day, depending on how much you drink, how much you eat, which hormone is tested, what time the hormone is tested. Well, the whole concept really didn't come into maturity until after 2002. Before 2002, women would take hormone replacement therapy. It was thought that great treatment for symptoms of the menopause, keep you young, keep you healthy, and it would replace, obviously, the hormones that your ovaries stopped making when you went through the menopause. But in 2002, the concept changed when the Women's Health Initiative was published. That gave us information that showed quite clearly that these hormones that were being handed out to most women just so routinely, well, those hormones that were thought to be safe and effective were actually shown to increase the risk of heart disease and stroke, increase the risk of breast cancer and blood clots. So how all of a sudden is a supposedly similarly structured compound from a plant or a structurally identical compound from a plant going to be safe and effective when we're not exactly sure what's in it, but we do know what's in a prescription. Doesn't make any sense. And when was the last time you ever heard about a plant making estrone or estriol or estradiol or testosterone or progesterone? I'm not aware of that. But that's where these hormones come from. But what really happens is there are precursor chemicals that are altered chemically to become similar to the products that your body makes. But unfortunately, the ratios in these so-called bioidentical hormones have nothing to do with what your body makes. Actually, the term bioidentical hormone, it's a marketing term. It's not based on any scientific evidence. And the concept of natural hormones being necessarily safe. Well, I think your body makes an awful lot of stuff that probably isn't very safe, the toxic waste. So they, you get a, a product called Biest that's very popular, or another one called Triest. The Biest has two estrogens. The Triest has three estrogens. So in the Biest, 80% is estriol and 20% is estradiol. 
that's not a ratio that your body ever made. And as a matter of fact, that's a weight basis. It has nothing to do with bioactivity in your body. And a similar thing with the uh, triest. Well, if we look at the estriol, that's the least active of all of the female hormones. And as a matter of fact, the estriol is made by the placenta in pregnant women, and there's hardly any of it in a normal woman's body, certainly before the menopause or after the menopause. The estrone that's in the triest, 10%, well, that's at least manufactured a little bit by the ovary. Most of it comes from the uh, androstene dione that's made by the ovary and by the adrenal gland, and it's metabolized to the estrone in the fat cells. Well, if you take a bioavailable hormone, you have an option of taking it by mouth or under your tongue or by a suppository or sometimes by an injection. And theoretically, the concept will allow a laboratory to have more dose flexibility. You could get a lower dose theoretically than the prescription dose and theoretically it's going to become less costly. However, there's a lack of any medical evidence or scientific evidence behind the whole concept. The FDA approved products are much safer. We know all about the benefits and we know all about the risks. There is no question. The Food and Drug Administration considers these bioidentical hormones to be unapproved new drugs. The State Board of Pharmacy regulates them actually and for the most part they don't seem to care. Now unfortunately the Dietary Health and Education Act considers compounded hormones that are applied to the skin to be supplements, just like an herb or a vitamin is a supplement. There is no safety and efficacy testing that is required. The bioidentical hormones are not approved. There's no official labeling. There's no list of the warnings and contraindications. We don't have any good pharmacokinetic information about these products, the way the chemical is going to be used in your body. The claims that they're safe and effective are unsupported. We don't know anything about the purity or the safety of these products. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the products, you buy a whole bunch of them and you evaluate them, you find that about a third of them fail on at least one standard quality test as opposed to almost none of the FDA approved products. And one study evaluated a series of these bioidentical hormones, looked at what was on the label and found gigantic variation, either considerably less or much more of the product than was being prescribed. Well, some women use a bioidentical progesterone product manufactured from the Mexican wild yam. And these are women who have the uterus still in place and think that they're using the progesterone to protect them against cancer of the womb. But sometime, since we find that the Mexican wild yam, the progesterone in there is not available to humans, we find that the uterus is not going to be protected. Women are going to get intermittent spotting or some irregular bleeding and potentially they'll be at risk for developing cancer of the uterus. So these products, the bottom line is that at least at present, they are of unproven safety, unproven effectiveness. You have people who are taking them because of what their doctors are saying. And the doctors don't have any information that what they're saying is true. Unfortunately, it's one of those fad things and it's gotten to a point now where there are as many women taking the bioidentical hormones as the hormones that we know are safe and effective and we know the risks. 
Remember, when you take a bioidentical hormone, you don't know what you're getting into. You don't know what your heart-related risk or your stroke-related risk or your risk of breast cancer is. And all you can say is that if the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, if the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, if the Endocrine Society and the FDA says don't use them, and your doctor thinks they know more than the combined wisdom of all of those groups, well, you get the picture. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.